Hello and welcome everybody. I am Miranda and you're here with May Yoga. Our video today is going to be a full-length yoga practice complete with that beautiful Shavasana that we can all look forward to at the end with a little bit of a focus on our legs. We get some good leg work today. If this is your first time practicing with me, I ask that you look in the description below this video, find a link for a separate video called Tips for a Safe Yoga Practice and watch that first. For props, the only thing you're going to need, I would recommend to have that beautiful water nearby. You can stay hydrated while we get our bodies moving. Okay, so we're all going to start at the top of the mat standing. I will see you there. Everyone meeting in Tadasana, the front of the mat, feet are parallel. Scoop that pelvis under, roll the shoulders back, arms relaxed at the side of the body for a moment. Find this grounding pose, find this stance. At the beginning and end of every Surya Namaskar flow, we're going to hold into Dasana to kind of bring that sturdiness back into your practice. So taking a deep inhale here, and exhale. Bringing the hands together at the heart, Anjali Mudra for one deep breath. And release. Open the eyes, begin. Bend the knees slightly, inhale, swoop those arms up. Just going to a straight line on this first one. We're going to be going nice and slow on this first set of Surya Namaskar. Kind of finding our, our poses, letting the body open up gently. So moving the fingers, the wrist, warming up the hands here. Keeping that pelvis tucked forward, the tailbone scoop down. Nice straight line in the body. And then inhale here, drop the shoulders. Exhale, begin to hinge at the hips, draw the arms forward, and then all the way to forward fold. Letting the torso just hang here, letting gravity kind of start to open our back, maybe wiggle a little, bring a little play into your pose. Shaking the hands out if that feels good to you, maybe swaying a little side to side. And then returning to center slowly. Inhale, bring yourself up halfway, shoulders roll up to the ears, squeeze the shoulder blades together, making that flat back. Your arms are relaxed, dangling in front of you, your gaze is down at the ground, making a nice long line from the crown of the head to the base of the spine, pulling the navel in. Inhale here. Exhale, draw the fingertips down to the mat. We're going to be working on our left leg, so step that left foot back into a high lunge. Stay up here on the fingertips, just giving yourself a little bit of height to slowly start to open those hips up. Your right knee is at a 90 degree angle. Your back leg is straight. You're on the ball of that back foot. And then now draw the hands down to the mat. You want your middle finger pointing to the front, the thumb stretched out towards the opposite hands, opening the hands, pressing into the palms. Inhale, lift up the right knee and exhale, step it back to plank. Holding in this plank for a few breaths. Your shoulders are in line over the wrist. You're pushing into the hands to take that pressure out of the wrist joints. Your heels are drawing back, pulling in the belly, squeezing the glutes. Starting to warm up the whole body here, strengthening our whole system. Inhale here, and then exhale, bend the knees, and then keep the hips squeezed up. You're going to go into a small back bend, drop the chest down, and then the chin. Keep the elbows close to the ribs, hands are underneath the shoulders, chin is rested, close the eyes for a moment. Just squeezing the lower back here, nice supported back bend. And then lower the entire front of your body down to the mat. Drop the forehead down for a moment to release that back bend. And keeping the hands under the shoulders, on your next inhale, start to push into the hands. Just do a half cobra. Ardha Bhujangasana. Your shoulders are opening back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Elbows again are kept close to the side of the body. Your feet are pointed back. Try to keep those legs zippered tight together. Looking forward. And then inhale. Exhale. Again, drop the front of the body down. We're going to work up to a down dog. You can do this nice and easy. Just push up on the hands and knees first. Walk the knees forward slightly. 
And then we're going to push into the balls of our feet. Exhale, lift up the hips, come to that first down dog. Now walk your feet out. Think about pedaling the heels. Just releasing the ankles here. Releasing the knees. Hands are shoulder width distance apart. Last breath here. And then inhale that left foot up behind you. Exhale, swing it to the front, using your left hand if you need to draw that left ankle forward. Coming into this lunge on the opposite side, feet are hip width distance apart. We're going to do a little bit of a hip flexor kind of a work here. So you're going to inhale, dip those hips down a bit, and coming forward slightly. Exhale, straighten that front leg a bit, letting yourself move to the back of the mat. Inhale, move the body towards the front of the mat. Exhale. Move to the back. Last one. Inhale to the front. Dip those hips. Exhale. Straighten that leg a bit. Bend that left knee. Inhale. Step the right foot to the front. And exhale. Fold. This is our second Uttanasana. So maybe we can bring a little bit of a back kind of shoulder like a release. Go ahead and bend the elbows. Make space between the ring finger and the pinky finger. Tuck that into the crooks of the elbows. And now let your forehead release down to the top of your arms. Just kind of making a little bit of an arm bind, bringing the focus to the lower back. Still getting a great stretch of the hamstring area. Inhale here. Exhale, release the arms, just hanging for a moment. And then bend the knees to take the pressure out of the lower back. Inhale, swoop the arms up, coming up to that straight line. Here, go ahead and interlace the fingers, turn the palms up to the sky. Getting a nice opening throughout our finger joints. Hold here, and then for this last breath, let's work on the calf raise. Inhale, rise up on the balls of those feet, come into tippy toes, looking up. Bring the palms together, and exhale, release the feet down to the mat, hands come back to the heart. Having the eyes closed for a moment, already noticing little differences in your body that just that maybe five minutes or so of working brings to you. Noticing the subtle differences between the left and the right side of the body. We're going to work on the right side now to bring your body back into balance. So last breath here. Open the eyes and begin. Bend the knees slightly. Inhale, swoop the arms up. First coming up to Urdhva Hastasana, now we're going to go into a slight cervical back in your upper back. So keeping that pelvis tucked forward, no strain on the lower back. Start to move the arms back, opening the shoulders and the chest, looking up at the sky, pulling in the navel. Inhale, exhale, hinge at the hips, coming all the way, forward fold. Arms release down. From here, you can use your fingertips if you like, just to walk the hands a little side to side, or maybe if you want, you can even grab the outside ankle with the opposite hand before moving over to the other side. Starting to bring a little twist into our spine now, now that we've got it a bit more warmed up. Now returning to center, moving into that flat back neck. So inhale, roll the shoulders up, squeeze the shoulder blades together, pulling in the belly button, looking down at the ground, very active stretch on the hamstrings, but you're also engaging your core here. Strengthening your whole back, working the abs a bit. Inhale here. Exhale, draw the hands down to the mat, maybe just to the fingertips again. And then step that right foot back into that lunge. Nice high lunge here. Give yourself some space with the fingertips. Or if you're feeling really loose in your hips already, you can go ahead and drop down to the hands. Listen to your body, do what you need to do. Respect yourself, right? So that front knee is in a 90 degree bend. Holding here for one more breath. And now draw the hands down to the mat. Lay some flat, open them up. 
Inhale here. Exhale, step back to plank. Squeezing everything, activating your whole body here. There's a reason why planks are so popular, especially with core work, because it really does just give you a whole strong straight line in your body. Inhale, one more deep inhale. And then exhale. You can do knees, chest, chin, or maybe just slowly lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Keeping the elbows close to the ribs, point the feet back. And now on your next inhale, come up to a cobra. So keep the hips down low, just opening the shoulders, looking forward. Hands are nice and open on the mat, squeezing the lower back. Try to keep those legs zipper tight together so you don't twist the back here. Just going into a back bend. Inhale, exhale, release down to the mat. Tuck the toes under. Now going up to down dog, however you like. If you need to do knees, hands and knees first, or if you want, just push yourself up and then push the hips back, down dog. Holding for three, pedal the feet out. Feeling a little bit more warm, a little bit more loose. Last breath. And now right foot floats up behind you. Exhale, draw it to the front. Coming into that 90 degree bend, doing our hip flexor work. So inhale, dip the hips down a little to the front. Exhale, start to straighten that right leg a bit and move the hips back. Moving with the breath, inhale to the front. Exhale to the back. Last one, guys. Inhale. And exhale. Bend that right knee. Inhale, step the left foot forward. And exhale, fold. Now this is the last Uttanasana we're going to hold in, so go ahead and grab the backs of the legs. Pulling yourself a little deeper in your forward fold, using the strength of your arms to really start to open up the back of the legs. Last breath here. And then release the hands, bend the knees slightly. Inhale, swoop the arms up, palms come all the way together. Again, we're going to challenge ourselves with those little raise of the calves, working those ankles. So you can either interlace the fingers, put the palms up, or just do the two-piece fingers. Inhale, come up. Squeezing everything, challenging the balance. Inhale. Palms come together and exhale, back to the heart. Awesome job, guys. Finding your Tadasana, closing the eyes, taking a few moments. One more breath here. And exhale fully. Open the eyes, we'll begin that second set, move in with our breath. So bend the knees, inhale, swoop up. Going into that cervical back bend. Exhale, draw the arms forward to Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, draw the hands down, step that left foot back. Hold here in this high lunge for that inhale, getting the palms nice and flat. Exhale, right foot back to plank. Stay here in breath. Exhale, take your vinyasa coming down to the mat. Inhale, swim through cobra or upward facing dog if you're feeling it. Exhale, down dog. Everyone hold it down dog for three. Getting those heels a little bit closer to the mat, pulling the belly button in, thinking of drawing your heart towards the back of the mat. Last breath here. Inhale, left foot floats up behind you. Exhale to the front. Inhale, right foot steps forward, exhale, fold. Bend those knees, inhale, swoop the arms up, palms touch, exhale to the heart. Taking two breaths here to just steady yourself in, being strong, sturdy mountains. One more breath, exhale. Open the eyes, begin. Inhale, swoop the arms all the way to top, moving into the cervical back bend. 
Exhale, draw the arms forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands come down, step that right foot back, hold here for that in breath, getting the palms nice and flat to the mat. Exhale, back to plank. Stay here, inhale. Exhale, take your vinyasa. And finding down dog, staying for three slow breaths. Pushing into all parts of the palms. Your ears are framed by your biceps and your arms, giving you that nice little anatomy that you can hold on to, get the correct posture. Last breath. Inhale, right foot up behind you. Exhale to the front. Inhale, left foot steps forward. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive, palms touch. Exhale, to the heart. Maybe take a little bit of water with me real quick before we start this third set. Get your hydration in. And then in this third set, we're going to be adding some little fun bonuses in here. So we'll be doing chair pose, in case you know and love that one, Utkatasana. And we're also going to be doing a little bit of a work with extended side angle, the Vitita Parsvakonasana. So I will be giving you verbal guidance, obviously, the whole time. It is going to be a bit fast, like the second set with our breath, but then also holding for these extras. So do the best you can. If you lose the flow, do not criticize yourself, just come back when you can, and that will be the best thing to do, right? So bringing the hands back to the heart, if you took that water, finding Tadasana, hands slightly touching, last breath here, and exhale. Open the eyes, begin, bend the knees, inhale, arms come up, going into that cervical back bend. Exhale, draw yourself forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward. Now here we're going to go from Utkatasana. So I want you to bring those feet together, walk your feet together. So your legs are squeezed tight together here. You're going to inhale, start to raise up the arms in front of you. Sit back. Don't let your knees go beyond your toes. Protect those knee joints. You can look down at your knees, check that they're not moving past the toes. Arms are about 45 degrees up, looking forward for a moment. And then exhale, just let the arms swing down. Keep your seat where it is, fly the arms back. You can stay with the palms facing each other towards the back, or maybe interlace the fingers, go into a hand clasp, pull the shoulders open. Still squeezing the glutes, squeezing the legs together, looking down at the mat in front of you, a little ahead of you, not pinching the neck. Inhale here, and then slowly release back to forward fold. Giving yourself an inhale, open the feet back up, hip width distance apart. And then we're going to continue on our Surya Namaskar. Step that left foot back, hold for this inhale. And then exhale, right foot comes back. Hold for that inhale and plank. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Coming up on that inhale. And exhale. We're going to finish with going back to our high lunge. So inhale that left foot up. And then exhale, draw it to the front. Now from here we're going to go into the other bonus. So make sure your feet are hip width distance apart. We're going to first check that our feet are flat. That front foot is flat. Front knee is 90 degrees. You're going to pinwheel the arms, drawing them up to warrior two. So inhale, swing the arms up. Drop that back heel so that foot is 90 degrees. There's a line between the front heel to the arch of that back foot. So check your alignment here, guys. 90 degrees angle with the feet. 90 degree angle on that front knee. Inhale, the arms come up. Warrior two. And then just go into a peaceful warrior. Shanti Virabhadrasana, left hand floats up. Right hand rests on the back of the right leg. And then exhale. Draw that left forearm to the top of the left quadricep. Swing that right arm down. Coming all the way 
into that extended side angle. Left palm is faced up, right palm is faced down. Stay here, or if you want to go to the next level, you can drop the left fingertips to touch the mat. Right arm floats up in a straight line up to the sky. Third level for my guys that want to go a bit deeper, go into that hand clasp. Left arm goes under the leg, bend that right elbow, clasp your hands any way you like for that hand clasp, and then pull that right shoulder open. This is our challenge in our Surya Namaskar, so really hold it, guys. Feel the beauty of this pose, any level that you're at. Nice. Start to release if you're in that hand clasp. Bring yourself all the way back up into that original level, first level, Uttita Parsvakanasana. Inhale, pinwheel yourself to the back for just a moment, reverse warrior. Exhale, draw the hands back to the mat. I'm going to finish off. Inhale here. Exhale. On your inhale, right foot steps forward. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Palms touch overhead. Exhale, back to the heart. Holding here. Again, finding the stillness. Taking this moment to send a bit of gratitude to whatever choice you made, whatever level you went to in that extended side angle. Just feeling grateful you did it, you rocked it, you did your best. It's all awesome. One more breath here. Letting it out, opening the eyes, and begin. Inhale, arms come up, cervical back bend. Exhale, coming all the way. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. And now, bring the fingertips down. We're going to move into the other version of our chair pose. So again, walk the feet together, squeezing the legs together. Inhale, start to sit back, not letting the knees go beyond the toes, and those arms swing up. From here, draw the hands, Anjali Mudra at the heart. We're going to do a little twisted chair pose. So start to draw that right elbow towards the top of that left quadricep. Pushing into that left quadricep, looking over the shoulder. Inhale, exhale, back to the center, Anjali Mudra. And of course we got to do the other side. So left elbow comes to the top of that right quadricep, push into the hands. Parivruta Utkatasana, twisted chair pose. Hold here, and then slowly release back, hands together at the heart. Inhale, come up, exhale, fingertips down. Walk the feet out, taking your inhale here, and then continuing with the Surya Namaskar flow. Exhale, right foot steps back, come into that lunge. Palms come down, inhale, exhale, left foot back, hold here for that inhale, guys. Take your vinyasa and finding down dog, holding for three. Really pushing those feet back. This is our last down dog, so make it count for you. Really pulling that heart back, shining the heart. Inhale and exhale. Breathe in, right foot comes up and draw to the front. We're going to move into that lovely little variation that we did on the other side. So holding here, making sure your feet are here with distance apart. You've got your steadiness to draw the hands up. And then inhale, swing the arms up, coming into warrior two. So looking at your feet, right heel to that center of the left foot. Feet are 90 degrees. Getting that bend into that front knee so that the knee is falling out towards the outside of that right foot. Protecting the knee joint. Inhale, arms come up wide. Looking over towards that right hand, strong warrior two. And on the next inhale, move to a peaceful warrior. Just a nice, gentle movement. Right hand floats up. Exhale, going into that extended side angle. So dropping that arm down to the top of the right leg. Swinging that left arm. 
all the way. One long line from the tip of the left fingers down to the outside of that left foot. This is your level one, guys. You can stay here. Or if you want to go to level two, release that right hand so the right fingertips barely touch the mat. And then that arm is going to go in a straight line up to the sky. And of course, level three, if you want to join me, is going into that hand clasp. Bending the left elbow, right arm goes underneath that right leg, grabbing hands behind your back, and now peeling that left shoulder open. Looking up at the sky, challenging the balance here at level three. One more breath, you've got this. And then slowly release yourself, drawing yourself all the way back up to level one. We're going to go to reverse warrior to release this. Inhale, reverse warrior. And then exhale, pinwheel yourself all the way to the back. Taking a breath here. And then inhale, the left foot steps forward. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, swoop yourself all the way up. And exhale. Bringing yourself back to mountain pose. Just feeling all the amazing movement that you just did. Stretching, the toning, the strengthening. All the parts of your body working together. So guys, next we're going to move to balancing pose, which today I would like us to try dancer's pose, Narajasana. So if you want to stay on your mat or if you want to move off, if you feel a little more steady on flat ground, do that now or if you need to be near a wall, and I'll meet you in standing pose. So starting to shift the weight over to the left leg. You're going to step the, the left big toe beside that, sorry, right big toe beside that left foot on your mirror, and you're going to find your focal point, making sure that your left foot is nice and open. You can wiggle the toes if you need to, to kind of grip the ground or the mat. Finding that dristi, that gaze that you're going to hold for this now. When you're ready, you're going to inhale, lift up that right knee, draw it to the chest, Right hand goes to the top of that right foot, that ankle, and then exhale, draw the right knee so it comes beside the left knee, right foot comes towards your glutes. Left arm can just be relaxed inside. Now this is level one. If you want, stay here. If this is good for you on your balance today, hold this. If you want to go a bit deeper, you're going to inhale, that left arm floats up, opening your chest a bit. Shining that heart forward. Level three, of course. Inhale here. And then exhale. Begin to hinge at the hips. Draw the torso forward so that left arm is pointed to the front. Maybe doing a mudra here if you like. Or just having the palm up or down. And then start to kick into that right foot. Kicking it up to the sky. However high you have today. And hold. Inhale and exhale. Begin to gently release yourself all the way back to standing. Walk it out, walk the feet out, kind of releasing that in your ankles and calves. Now, of course, you know what I'm going to say next. We got to do the other side, right? So we're going to be on the right leg this time. Again, checking that your right foot is open, the toes are open, gripping the ground or the mat. And then start to shift the weight over to the right side. Bringing yourself up to the big toe on your left foot. And now find your focal point. When you're ready, on the next inhale that you take, draw that left knee up to the chest. Left toes pointed down for a moment. And then draw the left hand to the top of that foot, bringing your left knee beside the right. Great quadricep stretch. Hold here. Maybe the right hand is on the hip or beside the leg. Going a little deeper if you like. Swoop that right arm up to the sky. Open the chest. 
And of course, final level, exhale, when you start to hinge at the hips, draw the torso forward, right arm is pointed to the front, any way you like, and kicking into that left foot. One last breath, guys. And then <laughs> inhale, laugh at yourself if you did what I just did, <laughs> and then release yourself down. It's always interesting to me that you feel more balanced on one side of the body than the other. Our bodies are so not symmetrical, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so that was our little bit of bringing the attention inward, coming to our balancing. Next, we're gonna be doing some standing poses, bringing a bit more focus into these gorgeous legs of ours. So have your mat turned sideways. I'm going to be your mirror again, and I'll meet you there. Next part of this class is going to be standing poses. We're going to move to Prasavita Padottanasana, which is wide-legged forward fold. So begin to walk the feet out. You want them to have about three feet of distance between your feet. That's a lot of feet being said right now. So look down at your feet. To start off with, have them up parallel or maybe slightly with the end, like toes pointed slightly inward, okay? Bringing the hands to the hips. Inhale, straight here. And then exhale, hinge at the hips. Draw the upper body forward. You can keep the hands on the hips here, or you can go ahead and draw the fingertips down to the mat. Holding here, getting that this is a great leg opener here, so I wanted to kind of do this today, since we're having a focus on legs. So, Bowing forward here, getting a stretch into there. Now, of course, you can stay here. If this is good for you, you can bring the arms to the out, the hands to the outside of the legs, maybe hook the big toe with those first two fingers, or if you want to work those shoulders a bit, release the arms behind you, clasp, draw the hand up to the sky. This is level one, wherever you are, just in Prasarita Padasana. Our level two, if you want to go a bit deeper, is going to be goddess pose, which I love that name. To do goddess pose, you're going to turn your feet out now, 45 degrees. Okay? Inhale, draw the arms up, start to bend the knees so that they fall out. You want them tracking over the feet. Don't let the knees collapse in. Make sure they're out. You can hold here, hands on the hips if you need that balance with the hands, or arms float out to the side. Level two is this. And of course, you know there's three levels. Mind the magic number is three, right? Level three is going to be bringing the fingertips down, keep those toes out. We're going to go to Skandasana variety here. So bringing the left hand, being your mirror, left hand stays down. Right hand goes out, start to bend into that right knee, left foot floats up. Really amazing stretch here right now. To switch, come back up to the middle, switch hands, Bend over to the left side. Right foot comes up. You want to try to keep this heel down to give you the sturdiness. It can be hard for some, but try to do your best, guys. That's all I ask. Just do your best. Moving to the other side. And of course, if you get tired of this, you're like, whoa, lady, you're crazy. Go to Goddess Pose or go to Prasarita Padjanasana. Do whatever you like at these levels here. We're just working our legs, moving a bit. Having fun, I hope, a little, <laughs> just a little bit. Holding, and then if you ever do need to stop, come back to Prasarita Padmanasana, have the toes pointing slightly inward or feet parallel. And then moving, for the last few breaths, just moving to whatever pose you like. Holding there. Getting those gams, as my grandmother would call my legs. Get those gams all nice and toned. And then we're going to finish with twisted Prasarita Padsanasana. So bring the feet parallel or toes coming slightly forward. Keeping that right hand on being your mirror, guys. Right hand down directly in front of your face. Inhale, draw the left arm all the way up. Looking over, just shoulder up at the sky. Taking two slow breaths here, really twisting your core. Last inhale, and then exhale. 
Left hand comes down, and of course you got to switch. So come down to the mat, inhale, draw the right arm up. Staying for a few breaths. Take that inhale, and then exhale. Bring the hands back. Keeping the fingertips down, slowly come out of this. You're going to start to heel toe the feet together, bringing them all the way together. Bend the knees, start to draw the left arms, hands up the front of the legs. At the top, squeeze the shoulders up, open them back. Do two more of those. Go ahead and release those shoulders. Inhale. And exhale, shoulder blades squeeze together. Last one. And release. We're next going to be moving down to the mat. So I will meet you all in Balasana, Child's Pose. See you there. All right, guys. Down to the ground now. Have the knees open wide as the mat. Big toes touching. Just drop yourself down to a Child's Pose real quick. Taking a moment to kind of release all that leg work we just did. Release the forehead, connect the forehead to the mat, and close the eyes. Kind of giving your mind a moment here to quiet as well. We're going to work up towards tabletop, Varmanasana. So draw yourself up to your hands and knees, hands stacked under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Pushing into the shins here, just taking a few cat cows. It's always nice to have those in a practice, just kind of work the back. So on your inhale, drop the belly, looking up. Exhale, curve the spine, pull the chin towards the chest. Moving with your breath, of course. Inhale, drop the chest down, belly down. Exhale, curve the back. Last one. Inhale, looking up. And exhale. Coming back to that neutral tabletop. We're going to keep focusing on the legs a bit. So drop down to the forearms, releasing the wrist here. You can stay up on hands and knees, but the leg work is the same, and I actually like to kind of have, a, have this kind of variation here, pushing in. It also helps in it's like a dolphin pose kind of formation in the arms. It also helps whenever you move into headstands. So if anyone's working on their headstand pose, this is a nice variation. So keeping your forearms here, hands clasped together, we're going to do a bit of three-legged kind of work here. So you're going to inhale that left leg behind you. Squeeze here, toes pointed. Looking down at the ground, in front of the hands, kind of behind the hands, sorry, so you don't pinch your neck. Inhale, exhale, draw that knee towards your chin, squeeze the core. Inhale, leg comes out behind you. Exhale, left knee comes towards the back of that left arm. Inhale, extend it. And now going to the other side, left knee draws towards the back of that right arm. Extend the leg, and then again to the center, towards the chin. Inhale, extend, and hold. Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the legs. A lovely holding pose here for our hamstrings. Inhale, and then slowly release that left leg down. Starting to shift the weight a little over to the left side so we can do the right side now, of course. Taking a breath here. On that next inhale, go ahead and lift up that left knee, point that left leg back. Squeezing everything here. Looking down the space kind of between the hands and the wrist. Take a breath in. And now going into our little sequence, exhale, draw that chin down, kind of touch the knee if you can. Inhale, right leg comes back out. Exhale, right knee towards the right, 
upper arm. Inhale, extend it. Exhale, twist to the other side, slowly draw it towards the back of that left arm. Inhale, extend. Last one to the center, go ahead and drop the chin down, pulling the knee towards it. Inhale, back up. Hold here for a few breaths. Really squeezing it all in the legs, squeezing those booties especially. This is a great workout for our bum. Take a breath in, and now slowly, gently release that right leg back. Again, returning to Velocina for this moment. Bring yourself up on the hands, open the knees up as wide as the mat, big toes touch, and let yourself just sink back. Kind of releasing that leg work. Forehead connects down to the mat. seated position. Walk the hands back towards the body. We're going to move on to our backs for the final part of this practice. So maybe just roll onto the hip so you can come to your booty, legs extended out in front of you. And we're going to go into a lovely forward fold here, just kind of release a lot of that work we've done into Pashimottanasana. So make sure your sit bones are connected to the ground, your feet are flexed, open the shoulders back here. Inhale, and then exhale. Start to draw the heart forward. Think of shining that heart forward. Grabbing wherever you can on your legs, or your ankles, or your heels, your toes, wherever you can, guys. We're going to stay in this for a few breaths. I really love having you hold Pashima Tanasana because it is a deep stretch that the longer you hold, the more you can kind of surrender into it. So close the eyes again. Let your head drop down. Let your eyes be heavy. Releasing here. Making sure you're not holding the breath. Allowing a micro bend at the knees. If you feel too much pressure in the knee joints, you don't want to lock the knees here, obviously. But you also don't want to bend so much that you lose the, the niceness, the efficacy of this forward fold. Taking just two more breaths here. Feeling that openness, especially behind the knees and the back of the shoulders. And now just gently release the hands first. You're going to start to draw the arms up the legs. And we're going to go into shoulder rolls in the opposite directions from earlier, resetting the body completely. So inhale, open the shoulders back. Squeeze them up, exhale, release them to the front. Two more, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Arms relaxed at the side. We're gonna move to our backs now. Not going to Shavasana quite yet, but we're getting there, I promise. So bend the knees, lower yourself down, Finding a supine position on the mat. If you have a ponytail, go ahead and release that so your head can connect, the back of your head can connect to the mat. And we're going to do a little bit of supine twist now. So with your feet down on the ground to start, go ahead and draw the right knee in first. I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to do this right side. So squeeze the right knee in, and then you're going to cross it over the left leg. Like you're crossing your leg here. Left foot is still connected. Now draw the arms away from the body perpendicular. Your arms are 90 degrees. Inhale. And then you're going to start to let your legs, your knees fall over to the left side. So the leg that's on bottom, that's the side that you let the knees fall over to. Your arms are down so that you can kind of get the benefit of the supine twist. 
And for the last part, maybe just looking over towards that right hand. Obviously, your right hip's going to come off the mat, but you really want to try to keep of, think of keeping that right shoulder as close down to the ground as possible. a beautiful supine twist, even a little bit of stretch into that right hip. And then to come out of this, you're going to use your arms here so you don't wrench your back at all, right? You're going to draw the knees back up to point the sky, unwind that right leg, right foot comes down, hold here, taking a breath. Moving to the other side now, left knee comes in towards the chest, use your hands, pull it in, and now cross it over that right leg, pointing the toes on the left foot, bringing the arms again out perpendicular from your body. Take a breath in here, and then exhale, start to let the legs fall over to the right side now. Keeping that left shoulder as glued down to the ground as possible. And then looking over towards your left hand. Making a nice twist throughout your entire core. One more slow breath here, everybody. And gently come out of this first look up at the sky. And now push into the arms, draw the legs back up, unwind that left leg, bring the feet down to the ground, getting your lower back completely glued. And now release, pull the knees in, give yourself a hug here. From here, we're moving to the kind of final pose before Shavasana. I promise it's the last one. But we do want to do a little bit of an inversion. It's always nice to bring some inversion into your yoga practice to kind of bring fresh blood flow up. So from here, this is a very easy kind of uh, an inversion. You can even be by a wall if you're feeling like being super gentle and relaxed. But on that next exhale, I want you to start to extend your legs. So like straighten them, pushing the feet up to the sky. So this is Viparita Karani. It's a lovely little inversion you can do so much in. So of course I'm going to show you what to do. Wahaha. So you want to keep your arms just so that they support your body so you're not wrenching your back. So bring them down beside the body, the palms face down. Now you're free to of course stay here. I'm obviously not in your home so you can do whatever you like. But if you want to join me, I encourage you to go ahead and release the hands to the back of that right hamstring. Now your shoulder blades are connected to the earth. And from here, start to slowly lower that left leg. We're doing some leg work here. This is our focus today. Don't let that left foot touch the earth. Hover it here. Maybe move the hands up further on the right leg if you want. Pulling it up higher, maybe all the way to the feet. It's up to you, but don't let that left foot fall down. Engaging our leg muscles here. And then slowly draw that left leg so that legs come back together. Viparita Karani. Moving to the other side here. Hands go behind that left hamstring. Slowly point toes in the right foot. Release that right leg forward. Don't let the foot drop. Keep it hovering, engaging the muscles, maybe moving to the calves on the left leg, or pulling yourself up to the feet, however deeply you want to go here. Holding here. Play with this, seeing where your range is. Keeping the shoulder blades connected though as much as possible, giving you your nice sturdy base. And then to draw yourself out of this, Release the hands to the back of the left hamstring. Slowly draw the right leg up, like closing the scissors. Bring the legs back. Last few moments here, doing whatever you like with this. You could do little scissor kicks, maybe moving the legs nice and controlled manner here. 
Maybe opening them up to the side if you have the space, you're not going to hit anything over there. Or maybe just going to kind of butterfly, bringing the bottoms of the feet together, wrapping your hands around your feet. Just taking these few moments. The longer that your legs are elevated in the air, the more you're going to get from this inversion. That's why I want you to try to like play with it and hold those legs up. As long as your, your feet, your legs are up higher than the level of your heart, it kind of just helps in that inversion. It really, really is a beautiful, beneficial kind of thing to play with. So, squeezing wherever you are, testing yourself, but always respecting your boundaries, going to that edge of the comfort zone, then a teeny little bit beyond. And when you're ready, you can extend the legs back up for this last moment. Release the arms by the side, palms are down. You're going to start to slowly, don't let those legs flop down to Shavasana. We're working our way down to Shavasana. We have earned the beautiful Shavasana that is coming, but let's work our way down to it in a nice controlled manner, lowering the legs, keeping the legs straight. Keep that lower back as close down to the ground as you can. Hover when you reach right over the ground. Hover, hover, hover. And now exhale, release all the way. Finding your Shavasana, guys. Letting your feet open up. Toes fall out so that your toes are wider than your feet. Finding a pillow if you need one for Shavasana to hold. Palms are faced up so that your shoulder blades can connect down to the earth. And for the next several minutes, we're going to be laying here with our eyes closed, thinking about, I like the image of being a bowl of ice cream in the hot sun, where you just slowly kind of melt. You're letting any last spots of tension that you still might be holding, you're consciously releasing that now. You're integrating all the work that's been done, and you're giving your mind and heart this time to fully enjoy the benefits of yoga. If you do notice that your mind starts to wander too much, thinking about the past or the future, as our minds are wont to do, I encourage you to just notice it. Think about, I like the image again, of clouds passing by in a blue sky. And imagine your thoughts are those clouds. You're just going to let them pass, returning to quiet.
allow yourself to stay in the Shavasana longer if you like, or if you're ready to come out, begin to move the fingers and the toes, make small circles in the wrists and the ankles. Begin to gently wake the body back up, bending the knees one at a time to bring the feet down to the ground close to the booty. And you're going to draw the knees all the way up to the chest to give yourself this long, beautiful hug here, wrapping your arms around giving yourself some love, showing that love to all the body, the mind, the heart, and the soul. Breathe in. And then exhale, start to roll over to the right side so that your right shoulder, right knee, right hip come to the earth left hand down to the ground in front of the torso, making like a fetal position here. Keep your eyes closed if you can, just letting the body move, push into the left hand and the right arm. Just slowly draw yourself up to your final seated position. Just doing a simple cross-legged, if you like, Sukhasana. Or moving into butterfly, anything that you wish here for your final seat. Arms are relaxed beside the body, palms facing up or down if that's more comfortable to you. And then draw the hands together at your heart. I really have so much appreciation to every one of you that joined this practice for making the commitment to improve your health, not just your physical health, hopefully your emotional, your mental health as well has benefited. So I hope that you share this love of yoga with me. I hope that it benefits and serves you well. If you did enjoy this time, feel free to leave any feedback below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you again on the mat very soon. Namaste.